What we're going to be looking at here is a zero interest bearing notes issued in exchange for property. And for example here, Corporation A purchases land having a fair market value here of $300,000 by issuing a three year zero interest bearing promissory note here in the face amount here of $400,000. Now Corporation A receives this land or property in exchange for this notes payable due at the end of the third year here. So what they're receiving, they're buying this land here from the landowner for, uh, and its fair market value is $300,000, but they're not going to be making any cash payments or any payments at all until the end of the uh, third year here. And what they're going to give them is a promissory note here for $400,000. So what they're going to be re uh, paying at the end of the third year is $400,000 to the landowner, but they're going to get the land here at the beginning of the first year here. And it's uh, for this promissory note and they're going to the land's fair market value here is three hundred thousand dollars okay so there's no stated rate of interest on this note here now the company measures the present value of the debt or this note in this case by the fair value of the land or property received the amount of interest is the difference between the face amount here of this note and the fair value of the land here now uh, we have to note here that corporation corporation A's borrowing interest rate approximates 10% here. So had they borrowed from the bank here to pay for this land, they would have had to pay approximately a 10% interest rate and an annual interest rate here. So what we have to do is we have to go um, calculate an implicit interest rate here on this notes payable here. And we have to determine what the annual interest rate would be here on our notes payable. So we can calculate in, in an interest expense each year on this notes payable. So what we would do here, I'm going to be using, um, you can use a financial calculator or in this case I'm using Excel and I'm just going to use the internal rate of return function and there you have to put in a range of your values whatever the, uh, what they are here so let's just go down and look at that so we've got three years here laid out here uh, beginning of the year one here through the end of year three here. So using our Excel function, all I did is put in the fair value of the land that was received here. That was the $300,000 worth. Again, the land's fair value here. And that's also the present value of our notes payable here by our definition. And then for the next two years here, we didn't have any inflows or outflows of cash. But at the end of the third year here, we're going to have to pay that $400,000 here. So that's going to be an outflow here at the end of the third year. So putting it into either your financial calculator calculator or in this case I'm using Excel internal rate of return function we're going to come up with based on this cash flow three hundred thousand dollars here received four hundred thousand dollars out at the end of the third year here we're going to come up with an internal rate of return or the effect of, uh, implicit interest rate here on this note of ten point oh six four two percent here so now knowing this uh, interest rate here we can go and we can uh, calculate our interest expense each period here and we have to note here uh, it was a good choice here on the amount that we're going to pay on our notes payable based on the fair value of the land here because we would regularly be paying 10% interest here on uh, to the bank here had we borrowed the money and when you uh, do your accounting here you have to make sure that uh, your whatever you're using here for your interest rate has to approximate whatever you would be paying to the bank or whatever the fair market value of that note would be here. So let's go down and let's look at calculating our interest expense each uh, year here. And again, I'm using this effective interest method here for amortizing this uh, notes payable. So what we have to do here, let's just go look at it. What we have to do is we have to start out with our present value of our land or the fair present value of this notes payable or the fair market value or land here at $300,000. And we have to amortize it up to $400,000 here. That's what the notes payable would be at the end of the third year here. And so we're going to have to recognize an interest expense each year here. And that's, and we're going to, again, use this effective interest method. So to recognize our interest expense here, well, let's first off make a note here. The payment amount here, there is none. There's no interest payments on this note here each year. That's why it's called an interest bearing note here. All we do is pay that one $400,000 amount here at the end of the third year here. So uh, for our interest expense here for the first year, again, and just take your beginning balance of 300,000 times your effective interest rate here of 
0.0642% and you're going to come up with an interest expense here of $30,193. So now to amortize it up just add that amount here to the beginning balance of $300,000 you're going to come up with $330,193 and then you just take that beginning balance that balance here times your effective interest rate and you're going to come up with your for the second year here of interest expense of $33,231. So you just continue on amortizing it uh, the recognize amortizing your interest expense each year here up until you get to four hundred thousand dollars so then again the numbers are showing down here three hundred thousand times uh, ten point oh six four two percent gives us that first interest period here of thirty thousand one ninety three and then just add that amount here to the beginning balance you're going to come up with your new uh, next periods balance here that you have to charge your interest expense against. And then just to note here, uh, to double check everything here, uh, using that just to make sure our interest expense was correct here on our internal rate of return function that we used at 10.0642%. We put it, I'm just using the present value function here. You could put it into your financial calculator. In this case, I'm using Excel here. I'm using that interest rate that we calculated through our internal rate of return function, our effective interest rate here, discounting it back that $400,000 um, uh, maturity value of the note, it comes to discounting it back to this present value, it's $300,000. So that to double check here to determine that the interest rate that we calculated was correct here. All right, so let's go up and let's look at how we'd record this here on our balance sheet. So uh, recording this land received in exchange for the notes payable. So at the first, this is how we'd have to set it up here. So we're, we're, we're going to have us here. I've got our assets here, liability accounts here, and then also our um, income statement account here. So what we have here, we have to set up this notes payable, which is a liability on our balance sheet. We'd credit that here for the notes face value here uh, for $400,000. That's on one one. 20x1 let's just say here and then we have to set up well what we're receiving here is this land the fair market value on our on our balance sheet as an asset here we debit that for three hundred thousand dollars fair value of the land or the present value of our notes payable either look at it in either case here so what we need is we need a balancing entry here between our credit here of four hundred thousand our debit here of three hundred thousand and uh, this is where we set up our discount to our notes payable here. Now, that is a contra account to our notes payable here. That reduces our contra account. So we've got a debit amount here of $100,000 on our discount to notes payable. And that debit here, $300,000 on our land account, balances with our notes payable here at $400,000. But this is discount here. Um, again, this is what we calculate our annual interest expense off. And that comes strictly off our amortization chart here, our table that we calculated. And uh, the difference, be, again, that's the difference between the face amount of our note and the fair value of the land is the annual interest expense here and that's the amortized amount. So at the end of each year here, year X1 through X3, we take it right off our amortization chart here. First year 30,193, then move over and re, uh, credit or reduce our notes payable by that amount here. And then we go over on our income statement, our interest expense, we would debit that here for 30,193. And then at the end of each of the next two year, or year X2 and year X3 here, all we do is we just take it right off our, in, our amortization table and we uh, credit or reduce our notes uh, discount the notes payable by that amount of interest that we calculated each period and then we go and we debit or recognize our interest expense here by that amount each period here the, for those three years. Okay so that takes care this is just how you would record our uh, this notes payable here uh, based on the present value of the you have to know what the present value of the notes payable is here and then you have to calculate your interest rate here and then you know what the notes payable was at here at the end of the third year here and then what happens here when the note actually becomes payable here at the end of the third year you'd have to pay the cash out so you reduce your cash account here uh, end of the third year 1231 x3 here by four hundred thousand dollars credit your cash account here and then you just take your notes payable off the books here debit that here for four hundred thousand dollars so it's um, the 
simple problem here. The uh, question is that you have to determine is that implicit interest rate here since it was in um, zero interest bearing note here and you had to know what the fair market value of what you're receiving here in this case it was property or land here and then you knew what you were going to have to pay out here when at the end of the period at the end when this notes payable comes due and based on that you could determine your interest rate and then charge off the interest expense each period here uh, for this notes payable all right so that takes care of our notes payable here or zero interest bearing notes payable uh, issued in exchange for some property